I never thought I'd be saying this, but the first beta of One UI 7, Samsung's Android 15 update, is officially here. And wow, there's a lot to unpack. So let's dive in and explore everything that's new. Oh, and if you're itching to try this out for yourself, you'll need a Galaxy S24 series device. And from there, if you have that, you just hop into the Samsung Members app, swipe through the top banners until you see One UI beta program, and enroll your device from there. Then within minutes, you'll get the OTA update. Thumbs up for how easy that is. Okay, let's start with the obvious stuff, the visuals. The moment I installed One UI 7, I noticed some massive changes. Samsung has overhauled the look of pretty much everything. They've cleaned up menus, rounded off every card, tile, and element, added softer animations and blur effects, and even made some elements bigger and bolder. It's like the whole UI got a fresh coat of paint, and honestly, it looks amazing. Also, in celebration of this update, our team created these unique abstract walls that go really well with any Samsung device. And paired with our widgets, your setup can look really clean. Definitely be sure to check them out on our Patreon link down below. Now, where you'll really notice the massive design overhaul is within the quick settings and notification panel. They look so much better now. Samsung even made them into their own separate pages. Swipe down from the left side for notifications, and then from the right for quick settings. It's very iOS-like, but I think it's a smart move because it gives you more room for each. If you're not a fan though, don't worry, Samsung still lets you keep the old merge layout if that's more of your style. They've also rounded out the notifications and then made the app icons on the notifications bigger. And when you want to expand bundle notifications, uh, you just tap on them and it'll open them up. Before, if you tapped on them, it would just open up the app directly, which was kind of annoying. As for the quick settings, the layout got cleaner too. The tiles card got condensed down to just two rows, and with a swipe down, you can access the rest. There's also a volume bar right above the brightness slider now, which is super handy for quick adjustments. And you can now customize the panel's layout, move your media player to the top, shove the tiles to the bottom, whatever works for you. Now the recent page is a vibe. It's smoother, cleaner, and it does this cool thing where the app you're currently using sits on the right edge while the previous one takes center stage. From there, you can swipe through all your recently used apps in a carousel-like fashion, and I've gotta say, it's really satisfying. Way better than the old one. Now let's talk about the home screen because this is where things get really fun. First off, by default, the app drawer is now vertical instead of horizontal. You can scroll up or down to find your apps, and there's even a sidebar now for quick jumps to specific letters. The search bar has also been moved to the bottom, making it way easier to reach with one hand, something I wish more Android launchers would do. And within the launcher settings, you can also change the app size. I max mine out, and it makes everything look so much better. It also changes the size of the widgets too. Speaking of which, Samsung also killed it with widgets too. They've added a bunch of new ones, redesigned the old ones, and made them more uniform in size, so your home screen can look a lot more tidy. From the clock app, to the weather, to the gallery, to even Samsung's internet browser, there are a ton of fun new widgets to try out for many of their apps. I especially love this pill-shaped alarm clock one because it lets me quickly toggle my next alarm on or off. And get this, you can now enlarge app folders too, so you can quickly open apps without actually opening the folder. It's pretty neat, but I do also wish that Samsung added swipe gestures for switching between folder pages, like how you can do that on Oppo or OnePlus devices. Samsung has also changed the look of some of its stock app icons. They now look much more colorful, vibrant, and bolder, making it look like they're popping out of the screen too. And finally, when switching to landscape mode, the home screen now has a much more consistent look than before. The labels below the apps stay right below the icons instead of beside them, the widgets don't awkwardly stretch out, and the icons within the app drawer don't get shrunk. Overall, a ton of fantastic improvements have been made to the home screen. The lock screen and always on display also got some love. There's a new feature called the Now Bar, which shows you live notifications at the bottom of the lock screen for ongoing tasks. For example, if you're running a timer, it'll display how much time is left and even let you pause it. It also works for music, voice recordings, and more. On top of that, when you unlock the phone, a new live notification pill shows up in the status bar, and it also gives you quick access to these ongoing tasks. We all know where they got this idea from. There are also a few new options whenever you edit the lock screen. 
There are now a variety of new clock styles, even with some new ones that animate as you turn on the screen. You can also adjust the thickness of the lines for the default clock. And there are also a few new widgets and shortcuts that you can add, like a picture frame, a routine you made, and even shortcuts for toggling extra settings like dark mode or power saving mode. There are definitely more actions that you can do as well too. What's a 2024 update without some AI features? One UI 7 adds a couple of new tricks as well. Just like before, Galaxy AI can still help you improve your writing, but now you can even bring up these tools even if you're using a third-party keyboard like Gboard. You just type something out in any text field, highlight it, and then you hit the starry AI icon. From there, you'll get all these AI writing tools from the Samsung Keyboard app to fix the grammar, change the writing style, and more. To top it off, One UI 7 also added call transcription. So now you can record phone calls and transcribe the conversation into text to read later. This is pretty big for us in the States since call recording on phones has been a long overdue feature. The camera app also got some big upgrades. Right away, you'll notice that a lot of the controls have been moved closer to the bottom of the screen, making them much easier to reach with one hand. Samsung even cleverly tucked away most of them in this mini drawer that you can tap on to expand. Super thoughtful. The pro and pro video modes have also been simplified. The pro video mode even has a new zoom slider for smoother and more precise transitions. Zoom presets have also made a return. You'll see shortcuts for quick zoom levels at 2x and even 100x now, along with the usual others that we had before. There's also a new exposure toggle that lets you control how bright or dark your image is turned out. And finally, for those of you who use grid lines, you can now separate the level from the grid and choose to have one of them enabled instead of both. And it even has a vertical level now to show you if you're holding the phone completely straight up. It's very useful. When editing photos and videos, One UI 7 also brought a few new tricks. For instance, when you jump into object eraser mode, it'll automatically spot those pesky photo bombers or random clutter in your shot. And with one tap, you can instantly remove them all. No more fiddling around circling stuff manually. If you've taken any motion photos, you can now spice them up with fun playback effects like boomerang or slow-mo and save those edits as shareable videos. Pretty handy. When you're making a collage, there's a new freeform mode that pretty much lets you go wild. You can stack photos, resize them, move them around, and do whatever you want. No rules. And when editing a video, there is finally an undo and redo button so that if you've made a mistake, you can quickly go back. Sharing stuff is also way less annoying in One UI 7. With quick share, file transfers will rarely ever fail because even if the devices start to get really far apart, Samsung will automatically switch to the Wi-Fi or mobile data instead of using direct transfer to get the job done. It's pretty smart. And finding the right device to share is a lot easier too. One UI 7 puts your most recently shared devices at the top of the list. No more scrolling forever. Gamers, you're gonna love this. The in-game panel got a slick redesign. It's way more modern and way less frustrating to use. Most settings can be tweaked without leaving the game, and there are new options to block Bixby, the edge panel, and auto brightness while you're playing. Game Booster also now lets you set different performance levels for each game, so lightweight games can be set to standard since they don't require that much GPU power, and then demanding ones still get all the juice they need. One UI 7 also stepped it up with health features. There's a mindfulness tool to help with stress and anxiety. It tracks your mood and emotions. Plus, it gives you breathing exercises. On top of that, Samsung Health now includes medication reminders, new badges for fitness goals, and even secure access to your health records. Yep, you can check your records from hospitals or clinics right on your phone, which is pretty dope. There are also a good amount of new productivity features, like you can now group alarms and turn them all on or off at once. Perfect for us heavy sleepers with a million alarms. To keep it simpler, Samsung also forced all the alarms to use the same volume level by default. However, if you'd still like to set different volumes for an alarm, you can modify this within the alarm settings. If you're using multiple pop-up windows from the same app, they'll now be combined into a single icon when minimized. 
And even the most powerful Samsung productivity app of them all, the modes and routine app, got even more powerful. It now supports if else logic, it lets you get data as a variable, and has a discover tab to enable some useful routines quickly. The calendar also got some new useful tricks. For example, you can now just drag and drop an event from one date to another to instantly change the event date. It's as easy as it sounds. You also no longer need to move events to another account individually. You can instead move every event from one account to another in a few seconds. So if I like to quickly move all my Samsung calendar events to my Google account or vice versa, I can easily do that within the settings. When it comes to the calendar widgets, you've got more control now. You can pick which accounts show up on each calendar widget. So if you want one to be showing your Google events and then another with your Samsung events, you can do that with ease. Oh, and if you're in a calendar event, you can now also create a countdown widget for it. No more manually adding it to your home screen. For reminders, you can now set them to repeat on multiple dates instead of just one. And when a reminder is done, you can automatically clear it after a certain amount of time, thanks to a new option in the settings. And when a reminder is completed, you can now choose to duplicate it so that you can reuse it without needing to re-enter all the information again. One UI 7 also brought a bunch of security upgrades. For us non-techies, there's something called Knox Matrix, which basically checks the security status of any devices connected to your Samsung account. And if anything weird is going on, it'll let you know. Then there's the auto blocker, which is even better at protecting you from security threats and privacy risks. Now in One UI 7, it'll also block 2G networks, and it'll even stop your device from reconnecting to a Wi-Fi if it gets disconnected. These extra measures are perfect for stopping hackers from intercepting your network. For battery and charging, things also got improved. First off, the battery icon now looks a bit different. It's horizontal instead of vertical, and it shows the percentage inside of it. Plus, when you plug in your phone, you get a new charging animation. The animation is new in the status bar and even in the lock screen. The lock screen animation is also at the bottom now, right where the now bar tasks pop up. I actually really dig that. Beyond that, there are other useful features that let you take better control of the charging and battery. Power saving mode, for instance, now gives you even more control over what features get enabled or disabled. For instance, you can stop it from automatically shortening your screen timeout or switching to a 60 Hz refresh rate, which is pretty neat. When charging, you can turn on battery protection, which adjusts the charging patterns to extend battery life. Plus, there's a maximum mode that stops charging at 80%. But with One UI 7, you cannot tweak that to anywhere between 80% and 95%. And of course, there are a ton of small but handy changes. For example, when you're watching a video on Samsung's video player, a replay button now pops up when the video ends, so it no longer just closes the video out. If you're into outdoor activities like running, hiking, or cycling, the weather app will now tell you if the weather's suitable uh, for those activities in that current day or the next few days. You can also label your favorite spots like home or office in the weather app, making it easy to check the forecast for the places you visit the most. To keep things consistent, the phone and contacts app now share the same contact list and menu options. And last but not least, the Edge panels can no longer be downloaded from the Galaxy Store. And that's a wrap on all the major changes found within One UI 7 Beta so far. It's definitely the biggest update that any OEM has released for Android 15, even compared to Google's native update. I'm glad they got it out just before the new year. I was a little worried when the first Android 16 developer preview dropped and One UI 7 was still nowhere to be found. But hey, totally worth the wait. There are a few things that still need some attention though, like some widgets looking a bit off when you expand them, uh, the nav bar not lining up with the shortcuts on the lock screen, and I did run into a few bugs, like when editing the clock on the lock screen. But overall, for a first beta release, Samsung really knocked it out of the park. This update shows why they're still the leaders when it comes to customization in the smartphone world. If you want to learn about some hidden tricks that you can do right now on your Galaxy device, tap on this video right here. Or if you're curious about last year's One UI 5 update, check out this one right here. Thanks for sticking to the end. Drop a thumbs up if I helped you learn a thing or two. Get subscribed with the notification bell turned on so that you don't miss out on any future awesome Android videos just like this one. 
and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Kapow!